So I want to talk about when we accept Christ, what does God expect from us? Does he expect anything? Or is there something that, that he wants us to do? You know, this book is full of ways that God wants us to live our lives. Do you know that 40% of people who go to church every single Sunday are not saved? That means people who go to church every week have never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Has ne they have never changed, but yet they sit there week after week after week thinking that they are a Christian. I've had people tell me, when I ask them if they're a Christian, had them tell me, of course I'm a Christian. I go to church every Sunday. Does going to church every Sunday make you a Christian? I have people tell me, when I ask them if they're a Christian, they say, of course I'm a Christian. I'm an American. <laughs> Does being an American make you a Christian? And then I have people say to me, well, of course I'm a Christian. I'm not Jewish. I don't know, if Pastor Bruce, if you've had people tell you these kind of things, what they think it is to be a Christian. But us, this morning I want to talk about what does God expect, to, expect from us? And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, 14 through 17. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one who died for all, therefore all died. And he died, that is Jesus, died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. So, does God expect anything from us when we accept his son? Are we supposed to say the, stay the same? Or do we change? Do we start thinking differently, acting differently, speaking differently? What happens when Christ comes into our lives? And for those of us who are Christians here today, can you say there has definitely been a change in my life since I invited Christ to come and live in me. And has that change continued? It isn't just a one-time change, but it means all through your Christian life, you make changes in how you live. God's Word, the Bible says that when we believe, we do become new creations. I hope one of your challenges today, there will be many, that one of your challenges today, well, you will think, yeah, since I became a Christian, what has happened to me? Am I the same or am I different? So let's read 2 Corinthians 5.17, one of our favorite verses. And I know many of you have come to the Bible study have memorized that verse. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, if you are into the daily bread, yesterday was interesting because it talked about that. And this is how they said about that verse. It said, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Do you feel like a new creation since you've accepted Christ? It appears that Paul says a change must take place, fast or small, slow, but a change has to happen. And God expects us to become new creatures and to be born again. Now, we are not to be afraid about being born again. Many people think, just like when they receive the Holy Spirit, that they accept Christ today, but six months later or a year later, 
the Holy Spirit comes into their lives, or then they are born again. But we know that from the moment you invite Christ to come into your life, you become born again. When I was over in Hawaii, over in Waikiki at our church service over there, our ministry there, I was, I was part of what they called the God Squad. It meant that after the service, a group of us went out amongst the people. At that time, we had three or 400 people coming to our services. So we never knew exactly who was out there, who was Christians or who, were, who was not. And one of our jobs was to go and, start and talk to the people. And remember I asked one lady, are you a Christian? She said, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but I'm not born again. Like being born again was something weird. It was like it was, it was something that she wanted no part of. She was afraid about being born again. But yet, in John 3, 3, what does Jesus tell us? He says, we must be born again. And why does he say that? Because he goes on and says that, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot, cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen, Amen is right. But yet many people think you can see the kingdom of God if you go to church every Sunday. You can see the kingdom of God if you say that you are a Christian, but yet there's never been a change in your life. It's not always easy, but a change must take place in our lives. And it must be a change that other people can see. Not just you, but other people. Remember the story when I was in um, Okinawa, and the guy, he accepted the Lord. And a week later, he came down the stairs and he said, I looked in the mirror this morning and I said, you're not the same person that I saw last week. He knew there had been a change in him. He saw that change and other people, his friends, his family, his wife, his kids, saw the change that took place in his life. So when we become this new creature, then we are to become, now this is another challenge that's difficult, but we are to become preachers for Jesus. We are to become teachers Many people think it's, it's just pastors and evangelists and missionaries that we're the only ones that should share Christ. But yet, the Bible says, we are the ones that must tell other people about Christ. Listen to the book of Romans. For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How then shall they call upon him to whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Folks, you guys are the preachers. You who are born again, you're the teachers. You're the ones that God uses to bring other people into his king kingdom. And when we, when we know Christ, he becomes our friend, and he is the one that we want to share with other people. And sometimes when we share, we never know when it's going to happen. Sometimes just walking down the street, the Lord plops somebody in your pathway that he wants you to share Christ with. We never know what happens. Remember the story I was, when we were in Waikiki, my day off was all by myself. Donnie and I took different days off. My day off, I always went to the beach. If any of you are familiar with Waikiki Beach, it is the most beautiful beach there is. It is long and wide. The sand is perfect. It is beautiful. So my day off, I would carry my chair, carry my towel, and I would go sit on the beach. And this particular day, as I was going to the beach, I told the Lord, please, let me sit by a Christian. I want to be able to talk about Jesus while I'm getting this suntan out there. And as I got closer to the beach, the Lord just zapped something into my mind. He said, there are many people out there who don't know me that you should be sharing Christ with. So being the big-hearted guy I am, I said, okay, Lord, send me one of each. And I went on to the beach. I found my spot, put my chair out, sat there, baked in that sun. Oh, have ever you ever enjoyed that, that sun out there? I mean, as we get older, we stop doing it, right? Because of all the diseases and cancerous things. But 
many, for 35, 40 years ago, I was laying out there. And then I got thirsty. So I went over to get me a drink. Diet Coke, of course. And I got a drink, and when I was coming back, there were two people sitting right in my space. And I'm thinking, why in the world, the beach is so big, why are they sitting right in my space? And as I got closer, I, I recognized the woman. She had come to a, one of our Bible studies, and she was a Christian. But the person with her was her husband, and he was not a Christian. <laughs> so what did I do? Big smile came over my face. I looked up in the heavens, and I said, Thank you, God, you sent me one of each. <laughs> and of course, to make that story short, three or four weeks later, he came to our Bible study, and he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He, God just plops somebody in your pathway when you don't even realize what you are doing. So it appears that the Bible, God's words, are saying to us that we who know Jesus are to be his preachers. We're to be his teachers. We're not to be ashamed of him, but we are to share Christ with the people that are lost. And we must remember that God is alive on this planet Earth. How is he alive? Because he lives in the heart of every single one of us. People will say, your God is dead. We say, no, he's not dead. He lives right in here. God is alive in our heart. Something else, a challenge for us Christians, and I know most of you do this, is that we are to become believers when we become believers we are to pray. I'm sure every one of you finds some time during the day or during the week or during the month or during the year to pray to God. So he wants us to pray. He wants us to read. He wants us to study because these things helps us to get to know God better, to get to know Jesus and who he really is. It's our way to communicate, our way to talk to God. I mean, just think about it. What a wonderful thing it is, and that we can pray anywhere we want, can't we? I used to pray walking on the beach in Waikiki to our office, about two miles, three miles. I'd walk to the end, then come back and go to the office. And all the time while I'm walking, I'm praying to God. What a great time of fellowship I had at that moment. But now, of course, we don't live close to the beach like we did before. So now I have a special time every morning. Not just for prayer, but for my devotion, for my singing, for prayer, for worshiping, for reading my Bible. All these things take place so that you can start your day really joyful. And then ending your prayers by saying, okay, God, I'm giving you this day. Allow me to bring glory to you. And you'll be surprised. Many times when we share Christ with somebody, we lose the friendship. Sometimes, you know, each of us, somewhere along the way of our path with the Lord, have known a person who is not a Christian. What do we do with that? Do we just ignore them and say, well, that person is going to hell, that's their business. Or do we take that and say, no, Lord put that person in our pathway. Another story, when I was, when Donnie and I are in Taiwan, we, we have a dentist in Taiwan. And believe it or not, this may not strike you funny, but he's a dentist, and his name is Dr. Chu. Now, do you think that's weird? A dentist called Dr. Chu? I mean, every time I used to sit there and talk to him, I, I just think of Chu. He's taking care of my dentist. He's Dr. Chu. I thought that was weird. And, and I would meet with him for lunch. And even he would bring his son once in a while. And his son wanted to speak English, so we would sit down and have lunch. But one day after going meeting him many times, I felt I've got to give him the plan of salvation. He was a Buddhist. I've got to do it. It's important that the Lord has put me in his pathway and Donnie's for a while there. Donnie's teeth needed to be taken care of and I broke my tooth as the Lord was saying, if you don't tell him about the Lord, I'm going to keep breaking your teeth so you'll get the message. So I shared the Christ, shared the plan of salvation for him. I lost his friendship. 
but it was okay. I did what God wanted me to do. His friendship was good. It was important, but not as important as letting him know how he could see the kingdom of God. Amen. That is the most important thing for us. And then in prayer, Jesus tells us of a special place that we can pray. Praying in a group is great. Praying on one-to-one -one is great. Praying with your spouses is great. But Jesus knew to really get down to the nitty-gritty of things that we have to pray for, we can only do it alone with him. So this is what he says. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. Because when you're alone with God, when you're alone with your Father, you will tell him your desires. You'll tell him your needs. You'll tell him your fears. And you'll tell him about your struggle with love for other people. Because when we become the new creation, we are to love one another. Your third challenge, loving one another. Because Jesus said, I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Is that a challenge or what? But yet it is God's command for us to love one another. Uh-huh. Faith is good. Hope is good. But to love is even better. You think I'm smart and I made that up myself? It's in the love chapter. But now abide faith, love, and hope. These three, but the greatest of these is love. If you love one another, then you are with Jesus. If not, then we are against Jesus. And we have a choice to be either with Jesus or against him. Jesus said, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. There are only two kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. We call that heaven or hell. Now I know as I walk around, most of you, I, I, know, I know where your heart is. I know you've accepted Christ. I know you have chosen heaven over hell. What are you doing with the knowledge that God has given you? Are you holding back in sharing Christ with somebody because you don't want to lose a friendship? Or is there someone who says that I am a Christian, but, but you're not sure that person is really a Christian? You, you, you're not feeling it. You're not discerning. Just because someone says they're a Christian does not make them a Christian. And, and, and if you're a Christian here this morning, are you ready to go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation as Jesus says that we should do in the book of Mark? Remember, the world is right where you live. Your neighborhood, your friends, your job, your school, wherever you may be, that is the world to God. It doesn't mean you have to travel around the world your world is right where you live. So if you know of someone who is not a Christian, ask God to give you the strength and the power to be a, to, you don't, may not lead them to the Lord, but you'll be able to show them the plan. Because it's so important for us to share Christ and to allow the power of the Holy Spirit, as Acts tells us, that the power of the Holy Spirit will be the one who will help us to witness. We are never alone because God is always with us. He's waiting for you to call upon the Holy Spirit. He's waiting just for you to do just that. And if there's anybody here who is not a Christian, I can't see anybody, then I would just ask that if you don't know Christ, you would open up your heart and invite Christ to come in. You'd pick up the challenges that God gives us. 
It's not just read your Bible and then forget, but read it and see what does God have for me. And you will be surprised as you share Christ of what it is. It must be important. Share Christ with the lost. Open up your heart and allow God to use you to bring glory to him. Do I hear an amen to that? And a hallelujah? hallelujah. And a praise the, Lord. praise the Lord? I hope that you are challenged. I hope this just doesn't stop here. But you can start communicating, not only with God, but with each other, so that we can encourage each other to be your witness. Let's pray. Father God, I again thank you for your love. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for loving us like no one else can. In spite of whatever we do, how we act, what we say, you are always there forgiving us and loving us and forgetting all things that we do so that we can start fresh and new. Allow us, Father, somehow to have that kind of love for one another. Allow us to, to be your witness. Allow us, Father, to get into a prayer time. Allow us, Father, to know that you are the most important thing in our life. And, and, and if there's someone out there you want us to witness to, Father, give us that power. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in us so that we can share your son, Jesus Christ, to that individual. Maybe the person may not accept Christ, but we have shown them the way for eternal life in heaven. And now I do praise you and I do thank you for all things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.